Hello everyone, and welcome to this video tutorial showing you how to use IOTEX Device Configuration Tool, or DCT, to create device profiles for devices and sensors that communicate using the Modbus protocol. To begin our exploration of the Device Configuration Tool, you sign into the tool using your username and password. Once logged in, you're presented with the main menu and the three main views on the left-hand side here. Let's walk through the three main views. Device types define the static typing information associated with a specific type of device or sensor. This is information that doesn't change from one instance of a device to another. For example, the name of the device, the manufacturer, the model number, a description of its capabilities and additional labels that can be used when querying a profile. This information is found at the top of a device profile. Here's a TPIO moisture sensor profile I created, and you can see the device type information at the top. You can view and edit the existing device types like this. There are also clone and delete options for users to make a copy of or delete an existing device type. You can filter, search, and order each of the items as you would expect. Let's show how to create a new device type. In this case, we're going to create a new device type for a Domocles 2 Modbus device. The Domocles 2 Mini is a smart I.O. controller used for remote monitoring and control of sensors and devices. Here's the website for the Domocles 2. The Domocles 2 Mini provides four digital dry contact inputs and two digital relay outputs that can be accessed via a Modbus interface. Once we've created the Domocles 2 device type, the next step is to define device resources for the device. Device resources define the specific attributes of each device, the measurements it records, and the data it can produce. Depending on the device or sensor type, it may represent data such as temperature, pressure, rotation speed, and so on. Device resources are defined for each device type. If we expand the device type items, you can see the list of attributes or device resources each one has. Again, I can edit, clone, or delete any of the resources whenever I'd like. Let's go about creating a new device resource. I'll use the Add Resource Wizard, select the Modbus protocol, select which type of device we are referring to, in this case, the Damocles 2 Mini, and then add the resource. Notice that this is protocol specific. Typically, when defining device resources, you'll need to refer to the manual for the specific device you are referring to. For the Damocles 2, this information can be accessed online. This page shows the device attribute and addressing information needed to create the appropriate device resources using the tool. In this case, the Damocles 2 has four digital input registers that can be accessed at addresses 100 through 103, and then two digital output registers at addresses 200 and 201. So let's add the device resource for digital input one. The device resource definition screen is divided into three sections. To start with, we'll give the device resource a name and a description. The second part of defining a device resource is to specify the type of value that can be read or written by the device service. This information is specified in the property section. Note that we have several different options for the data too, such as default values, permissions, which are read, write, or both, and so on. Property options are specific to each selected data type. So please refer to the Edge Expert or Edge XRT product documentation for a full list of properties for each data type. The final part of defining a device resource is to specify the device specific parameters required to access the value. This information is defined in the attribute section. Since this is a Modbus device, the tooling provides the options to configure specific Modbus attributes such as register types, including holding, registers, coils, discrete inputs and input registers, as well as required addressing and byte swapping if needed. Once we are happy, we can save that resource 
and continue to add additional resources required. And then we can move on to the generating the device profile. I'll spare you watch me type in the other device resources in this video and skip ahead to device profiles. Device profiles are the final completed configuration that pull together the details on how to model a device. Profiles list which device resources a particular device has and how we want to be able to access that data. Note, it is possible to have multiple device profiles for a particular device, since we may want to collect different data from a specific device depending on where it's deployed. For example, just because a device can sense the temperature doesn't mean we need to always collect it. We may be only interested in its pressure readings in some context, so we can have a specific profile for that. Now, I'll create a new device profile using the device type and resources created so far. As with device types and device resources, it is also possible to clone, edit, and delete existing device profiles. Click Add Profile and set the basic profile information, including protocol, device type, and set a name for the profile. We can then select which device resources we want to include in our profile. In this example, we will select the four input and two output device resources I created earlier for this device. Here you can start to see how the wizard helps prevent typos. If a device resource is not listed here, you need to go back and create one in the device resource view. The next step is to define device commands, which provide users with the option to group, read or write access to multiple device resources into a single command. Users can choose to have a one-to-one -one mapping between the device resources and get and set functions that can be invoked, or alternately, choose to group multiple resources together. That decision depends on your requirements. For simplicity here, we'll keep the commands separate. You may want some values to only have get functions. Again, you can control this here. Next, we move to the core command step. Note that this step in the process is specific to Edge Expert and is not required if you are developing device profiles for Edge XRT. Edge Expert or EdgeX has a core command service that sits in the EdgeX core service layer. It is an interface that accesses the device services in a standard way via REST APIs. If you want to be able to invoke the commands from the Edge Expert layers via the REST APIs, then we need to create the core commands to do this. So for example, we can create a get and set methods for each of the commands like this. Or we can use the auto generate button if we just want the default set, a get and set for each resource like this. You can see we are provided with get and set REST API commands here. You can edit any of these generated calls if needed, but these are fine. So I'll go ahead and click save profile. So now we have our profile, we can review it and possibly amend the details with the view and edit options if needed. The final step in the process is to export the profile as a physical file for use by Edge Expert, Edge XRT, or Edge X Foundry at runtime. Click on the export profile icon and you're presented with a number of export format options as follows. Export as YAML, required if you intend to use the export device profile with Edge Expert or Edge X Foundry. Export as JSON if the required exported device profile is going to be used with Edge XRT. There are two further additional export options which can be used when integrating an IOTech IoT platform with either Microsoft Azure or AWS SiteWise cloud environments. Specifically, 
AWS IoT SiteWise asset model, based on the device profile definition, the asset model contains a name, description, asset properties, and asset hierarchy definitions for device representations used in AWS SiteWise. Or, Digital Twin Definitions Language generates a model for use with Azure Digital Twins and is defined using the Digital Twins Definition Language, DTDL, which is not exclusive to Azure Digital Twins, but is also used to represent device data and other IoT services such as IoT Plug and Play. In this example, we'll export as YAML, and the file is automatically exported and downloaded. If we open the file, you can see the device type information at the top of the file. Then the device resources we created, followed by the device commands, and then the core commands. We can now go ahead and use this profile with Edge Expert or with Edge X Foundry. Well, this concludes my demonstration of the IoTech Device Configuration Tool, or DCT. Until next time, thanks for watching.